Welcome everybody. My name is Carly Graham Garcia. I'm the executive director of the Feliciano Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Montclair State University. And we are excited to welcome you to our latest segment of weekly women entrepreneurship. Today we are joined by Latoya Stirrup, who is the co-founder and CEO of Cosmology. And she's joining us from Miami. Latoya, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. So first and foremost, tell us what is Cosmology? So Cosmology is what you see behind me. So Cosmology is a company that I started with my two sisters to create innovative hair tools and accessories that are made for curls, coils, and kinks, but great for all hair types. Amazing. So one thing I wanted to talk to you about in your journey as an entrepreneur, and you are a serial entrepreneur. You have a couple of other ventures <laughs> besides just cosmology and its brand extension. But sitting at a university and running an entrepreneurship center, I was struck by the fact that with some of your first paddle combs and picks, you actually used a 3D printer. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about that first prototype and really kind of what the problem is that you're solving for. Absolutely. So the reason why we use 3D printing is for that purpose, rapid prototyping. So the whole idea of cosmology started from trying to solve our own problem. We were tired of long wash days, massive shedding when we were combing our hair, and just a really poor experience. And I was contemplating the situation one day, and it just sort of dawned on me, you know, we're using good products, we're healthy, there's nothing wrong. What in this equation doesn't quite add up? So then it was like, huh, well, maybe it's the tools. The tools that we're using may just not work for textured hair. So when I sort of thought about that, and at that time, this was like 2015 or so, finger detangling was really a hot topic for a lot of the YouTubers and bloggers. But finger detangling is really time intensive. It takes a long time to do it. So and that's where the kind of concept of redesigning the combs to sort of mimic what you experience when you're using your fingers. And that's how the idea came about. So what happened, I reached out to a friend of mine who's also my co-host on Tech Beats and Bites. He's a graphic designer. And I was like, hey, could you sketch this idea for me? So he sketched it and I took that to a 3D printer and then they did the prototype. And so we took that prototype. It was a really rough one. Took that prototype, compared it to like a wide tooth comb that we already had from like the store. And the results were amazing. And then that's when I told my sisters, I was like, hey, this idea works. We need to go ahead and get going and bring it to market. So that's what we did. That is incredible. Okay, I'm getting to tech beats and bites later in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. the whole. So one of the things you talk about um, is, well, actually, I should say, you were fresh off Home Shopping Network, HSN, selling the products that you just mentioned. But in the yeah. segment um, that I watched last time you were on selling products, um, the host talked about how the paddle comb had staggered seamless teeth and because mm -hmm. And comb a, a thicker section of hair without the hair ending up in the paddle comb. So show us this, my <laughs> friend. Yes. Yes. So as you can see, the teeth are completely seamless and they're also conical in shape, meaning they're wider at the base and thinner at the top. Yeah. So that also, again, mimics the finger process, right? And so they're staggered vertically. You can see like in the middle, they're a little bit longer than on the outside. And then also yeah. they're staggered how they're placed. So this sort of creates almost like a lattice, if you will, when you're combing through, which allows for a very thorough detangling, but it's still very gentle. And because it's all one piece, you can see there are no little places for the hair to get snagged or anything like that. Your strands can easily glide through while being detangled. So that's why it's gentle yet durable all at the same time. That's great. And what is that paddle comb made of? Is it actually like a silicone or a resin? No, this is plastic. Oh, it is plastic. Plastic yeah. one piece. Amazing. All one piece. So one qu additional question about sort of the competitive advantage of your product. Um, yes. I heard also in the positioning that you use to customers on HSN around um, the, I, I guess, sort of the, the type of curly hair. My mm -hmm. daughter actually has, so I'm a straight hair girl, but I gave yeah. birth to a very curly haired child. And so I've been learning that type one hair is straight, type twos are wavy, type threes are curlies, and type fours are coily. So you mm -hmm. actually rated your different products based on that sort of curl, uh, you know, uh, classification. Tell us more about that. That seems very technical. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so hair typing is a very, um, some people do it, some people don't. It just all depends on what it is, but it's a, it's a way for people to sort of help 
understand how a product works for their hair type, if you will. Okay. So we don't necessarily on our packaging call out a specific hair type. We just sort of say kinky, curly, coily. So you know that you're in that spectrum. But between the three of us, myself and my two sisters, on that hair spectrum, we range from about like 3B to 4C. So going back to your point, threes are sort of like the curly hair types, and then the fours are the kinkier, coilier hair types. So with that, we were able to use our hair tools while we were building them and designing them and testing them on ourselves to make sure that they would work for the consumers we were designing them for. So while we made them to work for that end of the spectrum specifically, they do work across all the, the, the entire spectrum. And you can also use them for extension care as well as well as wig care because a lot of those a lot of our customers who have sort of textured hair they do protective styling and when they protect the style a lot of times they will braid their own hair down and then wear extensions and or put a wig on top to keep their natural hair preserved so you're not doing so much manipulation which helps with length retention as well as growth and just making your hair healthy that's great. That's great. So you said a couple of things in there that I want to dig into. So first yes. of all, you started this business with your two sisters. What's it yes. like to be in business with them? And then in particular, I'm curious, how did you all fund this concept originally? And you mentioned the prototype and bringing it to market, but you know, mm -hmm. the three of you got together, you had this great idea. Um, and then, you know, how'd you get the business going? Absolutely. So how we got the business going is that we self-funded majority of the behind the scenes work, mm. right? So the prototyping, the product design development, the brand design development, the websites, I did the websites. <laughs> They're beautiful. And a lot of our, thank you. And a lot of our initial photography, where we started to take outside investment, if you will, we launched a crowdfunding campaign on iFundWomen. And um, that was in June of 2018. And that's where we first sort of like introduced ourselves and the brand to the public. Um, because what we wanted to do was to get outside of our friends and family talking about it and see what other people who don't know us think about what we're doing and what their needs are. So that was sort of where we were able to get some initial feedback and just, it was great because we were able to hear what we figured we would hear from our customers, which is always better to get it directly from them. And after we did the crowdfunding campaign, we also started to go to different hair shows and events. Mm -hmm. And we had our uh, really expensive prototypes at that point. They were like really durable and we could use them to demo. So we had those and we were pre-sell as well from about, so from June to December of 2018, we were pre-selling our hair tools. And we also secured a bridge loan from an angel investor which helped to um, cover some of the costs with the molding process because we have three molds for each of our hair tools. And if you know anything about injection molding, molds are expensive up here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. our upfront investment was pretty hefty. It wasn't a quick, you know, couple of thousand dollars to get going. No, we had to do some serious investing. Wow. So self-funded crowdfunding and then um, receiving support from an angel. That's tremendous. Yeah. And the crowdfunding, you mentioned sort of the customer discovery and feedback phase. Exactly. How did, how did the crowdfunding work for you? Did you raise a lot of money through that or was it really just to get customer feedback? We wanted to kind of engage and see how that would work. What we actually discovered was that for our particular customer, the idea of crowdfunding was a bit of a leap. A lot mm -hmm. of people weren't familiar with it. So it was always trying to help explain like because they were like so wait the product doesn't exist yet but you want me to pre-buy it hoping that you'll do it so there was some of that conversation that we saw that was happening and it can be hard to have that from a distance on a website but we were able to secure about maybe like five thousand dollars or so in pre-orders which is pretty good when i talked to some yeah. other people who have done it before they were like that's sort of around where most people land when they do their first crowdfund on their own and so we were like, okay, well, that's good. And then after that, what we found was a lot easier was when we would go to these trade shows because oftentimes we were the only, we were the only hair tool there. You had a lot of booths that had products. So these are the shampoos, the creams and everything else, but no one had tools. So we had right. tools. Mm. So that allowed us to really sort of stand out. And even though we were pre-selling, we were able to engage with them in conversation. So they could see it, they could see us, and it just gendered that trust to be like, okay, I'll give you guys a shot. Totally. Yeah. 
and we were really, really good with our communication. So we would send out periodic emails throughout the campaign while we were manufacturing, giving our pre-order customers updates. Like we're two weeks out, we're six months out, you know, whatever we were in that phase, but that really helped. And at the end, once we fulfilled, we got fantastic emails back. People were like, I love how you guys kept me updated. I'm super impressed with the product. We would get hugs. So really quick story. Once we um, returned the next year to a hair care um, expo. So the year before we were pre-selling, this year we actually had them. So we had people come up and like, oh my God, I loved it. We were getting hugs. And so it's been a really, really good ride. Latoya, that's amazing. Um, well, you, so I'm curious then about sort of, well, you know, you're a digital native. So everything you just said doubles down on what we talk about around engagement, right? Engaging your customers right. and sort of having that back and forth. So all that was fantastic. Um, thinking about um, the hair shows you mentioned and sort mm -hmm. of demoing the product, but also kind of building the, the customer base. So I mentioned before you've been having success on, um, on HSN. Tell us more about sort of the wholesale model, the retail model, the direct to consumer through e-commerce on your website, yeah. um, how that's working for you guys. And then if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about your price points. Absolutely. So we do all three. <laughs> so we have wholesale partners, we have dropship partners where they may have like an online marketplace and then the order comes through their marketplace, they send it to us and we drop ship it. So for the wholesale, we do like a 40% discount and that's where we're sending them inventory. If we're drop shipping, the percentage off may be between like 20, 20 to 30%. It just all depends on where we end, land with the negotiations. And then for direct to consumer, of course, you know, we keep it all. So for that, you know, we have a few different channels and our website is built on Shopify. So Shopify makes it really easy to sort of integrate with different channels like eBay, we haven't launched on Amazon yet. We're looking to probably do that and possibly Q4 of this year, but maybe more so leaving that to 2021. That's because Amazon requires a whole other level of setup. And um, HSN has been our largest retailer. So 2019 was our first year on the market. And going back to being a digital native, we sort of treated that like a beta. <laughs> so that was our year to sort of just like test it out, see how it works, figure yeah. out e-commerce, right? None of us come from retail or e-commerce background so a lot of that was different also just learning how to really sort of do a lot with a little right so again my background is in advertising so working with big budgets i'm used to that <laughs> so now yeah. having to bootstrap and do some things differently you have to get a little scrappy and test and try and see what works so but this year we've seen 9x um year over year growth all organic we haven't really launched any social media campaigns or anything yet. We're starting to do that now to get ready for the holiday season and to just continue to catalyze, capitalize rather on top of HSN and everything that we're sort of seeing with that. So for um, our model, it's very much direct to consumer as well as B2B for all of our retail partners. Yeah, 9x growth, that's incredible. And then tell us just quickly about, so you'd mentioned 40% off to wholesale, um, but yeah. then obviously sort of a different model elsewhere. The paddle combs, the picks, what is the price range? The pricing, absolutely. So, so you can see them. <laughs> All right, so this is the paddle comb and this one is 22. And like we kind of talked about a little bit before you saw this one, but it's also very multi-purpose because we have a tip at the end. So you can section and detangle your hair all with one hair tool. So that's also a time saver too. And a lot of our customers love this one because the teeth are so long. So you can get through thicker sections of hair at one time, which again, saves time. So this could help you cut your detangling time in half. So this one is 22. We have our pick and the pick is actually one of my personal favorites because it's the easy go-to. I literally have it in my book bag. It could fit in like a little clutch wallet if you need to. And it can work as a detangling comb or a styling comb on the go or as a pick to give you the volume throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And as a Miami girl, humidity is, can wreak havoc on your hair. It can make it flop. So the pick is an absolute go-to. So this one is 14. And then we have our comb, which is 19 uh, retail price. Let me get it for you. And so the comb kind of um, gives you a little bit more to work with. We have two different grips, so you can grip it up here or you can hold it here. And then it also has a sectioning tip on the end. And with this one, you can see the teeth a little bit better. So you can see that in between the teeth, there are no seams, but for manufacturing, that's actually called the parting line. 
because that's where the molds kind of come together when combs right. are traditionally manufactured. So that's sort of where the molds meet, which is where that thin line of plastic is. But when you're talking about textured hair, textured hair curls and wraps. So if you imagine your strands kind of gliding through and there's something there, it almost acts like a razor blade. Yeah. So as you're combing your hair, that's where you hear the popping and the snapping and Braces. the snagging. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Same thing with straight hair. So that's what I'm saying. These work great yeah. too. So straight hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So since you are a former advertising uh, executive, and I, w I wouldn't say former because you're still you're still using yeah. a lot of the branding and sort of the the, the know-how that you have in your current brands. Um, tell us more about sort of, you know, how you how you hope your brand will evolve. I mean, you don't just now have hair tools on Cosmology's site. You have other products. So what mm -hmm. sort of the evolution of what's next for this brand? Yes. So we're actually right now in the process of designing our next line. So that should be coming out probably like in 2021, Q1. We're also doing an additional feature for our hair tools, our existing line, that'll give some a little bit more grip. Don't want to release it too soon. But so we're doing some product expansion as well. And what we're honestly looking to do is just continue to expand the hair tools. We're probably going to dial down on some of the lifestyle accessories that you see on the website right now and just sort of really double down into what we're really good at, right, which is product innovation. And that's what we want to really focus on. So when you're talking about the long-term vision, we really want to be a huge global brand. I mean, kind of goody level, you know, and we're just, because for us, it's all about solutions. And there are just so many different things that we have up here that we want to just play around with, see what works and launch it. All right, you guys heard it here first. Con Air or goody <laughs> level. Those are two other major players in this space. Yeah. So cosmology, I love that. Um, okay, so I don't want to forget about cosmology, but I want to talk about all your other projects as an entrepreneur. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about Tech Beats and Bites. Yes, so Tech Beats and Bites is a weekly podcast. It's not a podcast, it's a show because we stream it live on Facebook and then we also have the audio available for podcasts. But we basically talk about entrepreneurship, tech, and innovation, focused mainly on South Florida just because that's where we are. And South Florida is a very hot topic in entrepreneurship, especially with tech. There's a lot of interest that's being focused here in terms of being another level of a market that has a lot of opportunity. And um, so it's exciting. So we have a lot of different conversations. We bring on different innovators, change makers, policy makers too, that we bring on to just talk a lot about what's kind of going on, hot topics. For instance, we just shot yesterday. Um, so that was in between the HSN airings. Um, I shot Tech Beats and Bite, and we were talking a little bit about um, different things relating to what's going on in the scenes in terms of policy. We talked a little bit about um, uh, defunding the police and sort of demystifying and debunking that and what that really means and what that looks like, as well as some of the state attorney races that are going on. So for us, we kind of mix a little bit of tech entrepreneurship business as well as community and just sort of that civic engagement conversation too. I can't wait to listen. So um, tell us where we can find all of this. Uh, yes. Cosmology and then also the podcast. Yes. So Cosmology, go to Cosmology.com or at Cosmology on all social media platforms. And in terms of Tech Beats and Bites, you can find that on all of your podcast platforms. And if you're looking for it on Facebook, you can either search for Tech Beats and Bites and it's Digital Bites. So B-Y-T-E-S. Or you could also find us at Digital Grass because that's our parent company. So that's also where you can find Tech Beats and Bites too. That's great. And I'm just going to spell it for folks. Um, K-A-Z-M-A-N-E-J-E. -E. Yes, the phonetic spelling. The phonetic spelling of cosmology. Um, Latoya, one last question for you. We've kept you for so long. Tell us a little bit. I mean, you're because you run this podcast, you have this sort of separate side of your mind and, and a separate business. You're already giving advice to other entrepreneurs. But tell our community, um, what are some of the bigger learnings that you've had, the do's or, or don'ts? If you could kind of tell somebody who, you know, who is maybe three years behind you uh, what to focus on, what not to focus on, um, give us your, your nuggets of advice for our community. I would say to give yourself grace. <laughs> you have to give yourself grace, especially if you're launching into something that you may not have fully done before. So for me, launching a manufactured product was something completely new, but I leveraged my experience in being a production manager, project manager, and just managing projects and launching digital projects. 
I took that same roadmap and applied it to this. So from ideation to design and creation to development, QA and launch, and just put that on rinse and repeat. So you really need to sort of tap into everything that you've learned because more, than li more likely than not, the things that you've gone through have helped to prepare you for the moment that you're in right now. So don't throw it away, use it and allow it to just empower you to keep moving forward. That is phenomenal advice. Thank you. And now that you You're work for yourself, will you ever work from anyone else again? Is being an entrepreneur now your calling? Yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're clearly it's my good thing. at that's it. That's my thing. You're clearly Thank you. good at it. Latoya Stewart, <laughs> co-founder of Cosmology. Thanks so much for being with us. And uh, we're excited to see uh, things move forward for you, which I don't doubt they will. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed it so much. Take care.